Okay. All right, you're welcome to day one. Day one, we are going to be making a uh, beer bread, and uh, that's going to be part of what we do today. But in every day in bread's class, we're going to be making a new bread. And I've adapted the recipe so that they can all be made by hand. So you, if you have a KitchenAid mixer, you can use the KitchenAid mixer. That's just fine. But for those of you who don't, then we're going to be hand mixing. Uh, we're also going to be making some old dough, some just some lean dough. And you'll see the recipe up on Talon. And that's what I have right here. I just have some lean dough that I put together. And it's just dough. Um, I'm not going to make bread out of it. I'm going to use it as an ingredient in breads to come. So today's bread is going to call for some. And same thing with tomorrow's bread. We'll call for a little bit and breads in the future. If we ever need more, we'll make more. But this is oftentimes used as sort of a starter. So I'm going to keep this in my refrigerator so that it just sits and uh, stays fresh, reasonably fresh so we can use it over and over again until we need more. We're also going to be starting today with a brand new sourdough starter. And uh, you're going to use this later in the block as we go. Um, the sourdough starter is just something that um, is a very simple process to make, but you're going to need your own. So um, I have one here. This one is my old one. This one's named Fred. And Fred has been around for eight years. And uh, normally we use this in class, but because we are now doing things online, we're going to make our own. So. Just to start off with that, let's start off with that. This is, a, this is um, 50 grams of flour, which is approximately about, oh, about two ounces of flour, and I have about the same amount of water. Uh, to make your sourdough starter, we're just going to pour our water into our flour, and we're going to mix those two together. So that is all there is to making a sourdough starter. It's just flour and water, equal parts, and I'm just going to mix this together until it's completely mixed. It's sort of like a it's sort of like a, a loose kind of a wet dough and um, all you're going to do today is just take about two ounces of flour and about two ounces of water put it in a little container, it doesn't matter what kind of container um, but as you can see very simple we'll put this together I'm going to put the lid back on this and we will address this tomorrow so put one of these together for yourself put a lid on it and um, save it at room temperature and we will come back to this tomorrow. So I'll put this off to the side. Tomorrow we do our tomorrow's video, you'll see this come back. We'll, we'll deal with that again tomorrow. So as for lean dough, uh, the lean dough recipe is on there. I would recommend making half of the smallest recipe. The smallest recipe calls for two pounds. I made about a pound and we're going to use a little bit of that today in our beer bread, but then um, you're going to save the rest of it and put it in the refrigerator. So that's the rest of mine. I'm going to put that away in the refrigerator. So that's your sourdough starter and your lean dough. Now, let's talk about the beer bread. The beer bread um, is a great bread. It's meant to be um, a way of using up leftovers. And historically, it's always been a, a bread for the poorest people. Um, the beer bread was meant to be used, use up leftovers. So what we had was we had leftover beer. Um, this, by the way, is just tea. I'm using some Lipton tea that was steeped in water. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that is because there's a lot of you, several of you, that are under 21, and it may be difficult for you to get beer. Uh, typically, when we make beer bread, we'll use beer that is left over. So if you're making beer bread with beer, take the beer, open it up, and let it sit on the counter overnight and let it get flat. We don't want carbonation in the beer. Uh, typically, traditionally, we would use an old beer that was left over from, the le from yesterday and it was meant to be a way of using up leftovers. For those of you under 21, you can use coffee, cold old, old coffee. Let's say you make a pot of coffee and you have some leftover in the pot, save it. We'll make bread out of it. Uh, the reason why people used beer was because it's safer to drink than water. Um, at one time, water was not reliable. Most of the water that we had was, was laden with bacteria, so beer was a lot safer. Um, in this case, leftover tea or leftover coffee will make a fine substitute. Another thing that's in this bread, bread dough, the beer bread, calls for some of that leftover lean dough. So some of this old dough was usually dough that was left over from yesterday's batch and we didn't want to throw it away, so what we did was we used it up and we put a little bit of it in today's bread. Um, I intentionally made some of that ahead of time, so that's right here. This is leftover bread. 
Another filler that they used in this bread was potatoes. So if we had made potatoes yesterday and we have leftover, well, we're going to use up some of those leftover potatoes in this recipe. I just cooked up one red potato and uh, I ended up, ended up uh, cooking until it was soft and mashed it up and we're going to put that in the bread. This bread also calls for some bread flour and some rye flour. Um, bread flour and rye flour are both available at the supermarket. This is the bread flour I've been using. I just picked up a, a container of bread flour, five pounder. Wasn't very expensive and it's a way that we can make bread. I can make several loaves of bread with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that for a lot of our breads this week. As for yeast, I bought this yeast. This is Fleshman's. This is meant for use in bread machines. It's just like the yeast we have in school. It's a super fine uh, active dry yeast. Um, instead of being active, it's active instant yeast rather than being just active dry. It's a good yeast if you happen to find it, but the packets will do. Just check the date to see that it's actually still usable. It's actually still fresh. This one I had never opened and uh, it was dated for February 2015. I opened it today, tested it. Sure enough, it works great. So as long as it's not open, it's all right. And your yeast, you can put it in the refrigerator after it's been opened, it will last for about six months. Um, but this was pretty reasonable at the supermarket. I picked this up and uh, it'll work fine. So putting together the beer bread, and as, as I mentioned before, I'm using tea. So I've got just leftover tea here from uh, some old cold tea and it's just basically room temperature. I'm gonna put that in my bowl. I'm gonna put in my Pat Fermente, which, which we call this dough, this old dough is referred to as Pat Fermente, and it's actually considered to be a starter. Uh, it's one of the five starters that we're gonna use in the bread class. So I'm just gonna sort of tear that up into pieces. I'm gonna put it in the bowl. I'm gonna mix this all together. Here's our potatoes. I'm gonna throw the potatoes in there. It's just, just rough mashed potatoes. Um, I mash them up just a little bit, but you can mash them up all the way if you want. I'm just gonna bring all that together in the bowl. Just kind of help get that pat fermente to break down. The pat fermente is a French term to describe old dough. So bakeries do this all the time. We have a little bit of leftover dough at the end of the day. We don't throw it away. We throw away all chunks of old dough in a bucket and we save it for tomorrow's batch. So here we go. We got all those ingredients in there. We're going to put in our uh, two flours. We have rye flour, bread flour, and a little bit of salt. Um, the yeast is also poured in here. I poured in the yeast, so everything's in there. And we're just going to bring this together. So as we do this, again, we're hand mixing instead of using a machine. And that's perfectly fine because hand mixing has been done for centuries. We've been making bread this way since the beginning of time. So all we have to do is just keep working it together until we get all the ingredients incorporated and we'll have a cohesive dough. Once it starts coming together as a ball, it starts coming together as a cohesive mass, I'm going to turn it out onto my board. I can do better kneading this on a flat surface than I can in the board in the bowl. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I don't want to lose anything, so I'm just going to keep scooping it up, getting it all together. Believe me, there's enough wet in here to give you a nice cohesive dough. There's a, a, several techniques for kneading dough. Um, we can knead dough a lot of different ways, but really the important thing in the end is that you get gluten formed and you get everything evenly mixed. That's the most important thing. In the end, it doesn't really matter how it's done. You can, you can take a piece of dough, press it with the heel of your hand, fold it over, press it again, fold it over, press it again, fold it over, press it again, fold it over. It's one of the ways that I do it. There's a French technique called slap and fold, which is a lot of fun. You can take your dough, just slam it down, fold it over. Take your dough, slam it down, fold it over. Slam it down, fold it over. And the French have been doing it this way for centuries. And it can be a lot of fun. Either way, 
what we're looking for is we're trying to get this dough developed enough so that it doesn't stick to the board as much anymore. We want to get it to a point where the dough is clearing the board. As you can see, it's getting sticky. So I'm just going to keep kneading here. And as I do, this dough will start to come together. If it does start to get really sticky on you, you can always take it and scrape it up. If you're doing it on a countertop at home or on a tabletop, you can do that. Now the slap and fold technique, what I'm doing here is I'm slapping, folding, and I'm reaching around the side, grabbing it again. Every time grabbing it by the side, and that way I'm turning the dough each time I do a slap and fold. Now this beer bread recipe, I'll have up on Talon, it's meant for one loaf of bread. One pound loaf, that's it. And all I'm looking for here in kneading is I want to get to a point where it starts to look smooth on the outside. Okay, I'm going to place this in the bowl. This needs to ferment now for about, oh, about 30 minutes or so. And we're going to let this rise for about 30 minutes. That first fermentation is going to be a real important step in the bread because what it's going to do is it's going to allow the yeast to do its job. The gluten has started forming in this dough. And because it started forming, we're going to have gases released by the yeast that are going to get trapped in that dough. It's going to start forming air that gets trapped inside. After about 30 minutes, we're going to come back and I'm going to give this a fold. So when we review our 12 steps of baking, we started off with scaling our dough or scaling our ingredients. Then we mix the dough, which we just did. 
And now we're going to go into bulk fermentation. 30 minutes of bulk fermentation, we're going to come back and fold it. The folding is going to help increase the strength, redistribute the yeast, help redistribute the temperature of the dough, and it will help to slightly degas the dough. After that fold, we'll let it ferment another 30 minutes. So we'll come back after 30 minutes and the dough will have gotten considerably larger and we'll be ready to go into what we call pre-shaping. This is only one loaf, so normally we'd have a, a step in there called dividing, but we're not going to divide this dough. We're just going to make one loaf. So um, why don't we come, come back in th 30 minutes. I'm going to give this, put some plastic on top of here, and we're going to come back and check it and give it a fold after 30 minutes. Okay, so time to fold the dough. We've been 30 minutes now and the dough has grown somewhat and um, we're going to go ahead and fold it. The best way to do that is going to be just to grab the dough from underneath, give it a pull. We're going to give it a, what they call a, a, a stretch and fold. So they stretch and fold it over. Go the other direction here and go to the side and then from the bottom stretch and fold it over and we turn the bowl again to one more and in four different directions so north south east and west and the dough you'll notice starts to get smoother on the surface it starts to get stronger from all that pulling that's part of the idea and while we're doing that we've redistributed the yeast and made sure the temperature of the dough is equal everywhere. Um, so that's one of the, some of the big benefits of, of doing folding. We'll be back in 30 more minutes. Okay, we're back. And this is the dough after two 30-minute fermentations and a fold in between. It's nice and smooth. It's full of air. It's really looking good. This is, let's say, just one loaf. Um, this dough is rather sticky, so I'm going to dip my fingers in water. Makes handling the dough a lot easier with wet hands. I'm just going to bring it on out, and it is it is kind of sticky. So we're going to go ahead and get a little bit of flour, put it here on the bench, so that we don't have to fight with the dough so much. Now this dough is ready to shape, so we're going to go ahead and get ready to make a loaf out of this. Uh, traditional loaf shape for this is a triangle. Um, a lot of loaves that we've made in the past have involved rolling up the dough into a log and that kind of thing, but to save time, what they did with this type of bread was they shaped it in a triangle. and It was really quick, easy shaping, and the idea was to keep the dough as inexpensive as you could make it. So I have flour underneath this. What I'm going to do is use the sticky side up and I'm going to fold these two sides. I'm just going to grab two sides and fold them down so the sticky side is on the sticky side, making the top of the triangle. Then I'm going to bring the bottom, the bottom part, and bring it up to the center and just give that a pinch in the center. And what that does, it forms a triangle. That triangle is the traditional shape and traditionally this would be baked this way as well with seam side up and this would tend to tend to flay open as it bakes but then we're not going to do that we're going to go seam, seam side down so it doesn't open up and um, I'm going to place this right in the center of my sheet pan um, this is going to proof this way I'm going to cover this and proof it at room temperature it's going to need probably about to oh, maybe 30 minutes 35 minutes to proof so I'm going to go ahead and uh, cover this and allow it to proof and then we're going to throw it in the oven and bake it. Um, this particular bread does not need steam so we're going to be able to go right into the oven as soon as the proofing is done. So why don't we uh, reconvene in about 30 to 40 minutes when this is done and ready to, proof, ready to bake. Alright, so we've waited 40 minutes and this loaf is about ready to go. Uh, the way I test it is we're going to test it with a finger. We're just going to press in. Here, let's press in in a spot where there's a little bit of flour so that my finger won't stick. What I'm watching for is my finger mark where I pressed stays. It doesn't push out, or if it pushes out, it pushes out very slowly. We're going to go ahead and um, 
and score this loaf. This loaf normally doesn't have to be scored, but I'm going to score it anyway because I just like how it looks. Um, I think what we'll do is I'll do like a radial cut. I'll just make a series of cuts on here just to kind of give it something, somewhere to expand. This is just a typical razor blade. Um, any real razor will do it, but also a sharp paring knife oftentimes will do the trick as well. If your cuts don't go as deep as you want, like this one is not as deep as I want, I'll just give that a little bit, of more, little bit more, touch up my cuts a little bit, just to make sure that they're deep enough. And remember, anytime you're cutting dough, uh, especially dough that's sticky like this, uh, quick cuts are clean cuts. So you, you really want to have a nice quick motion to get your cut to come out really nice. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the oven, and we're going to bake this off for about 25 minutes, and we'll come back and take a look at the finished product. Okay, so here we are, bread out of the oven, uh, looking good. Nice hollow sound. Looks like a nice loaf, of nice loaf of fresh bread. This is a, um, as I say, it's a, it's a beer bread, but made with with uh, some Lipton tea instead of beer. If you uh, decide to use beer, obviously beer is going to give you more flavor. Um, Lipton tea will work fine. Coffee would give you a slightly darker color, but this is a uh, fine loaf of bread. Let it cool thoroughly. Usually bread needs about uh, 30 minutes to cool before you start cutting into it. I know it's tempting. Go ahead and cut into it if you want, but uh, bread cuts better when it's cool and uh, it's had a chance to uh, to solidify. You know, when, when bread cools, the, the starches start to contract. They start to release a lot of their moisture. A lot of moisture is still coming off of this bread, fresh out of the oven, and uh, the proteins start to bond and start to hold together a little bit better. So it cuts cleaner, cuts easier. I know it's tempting, so if you really want to, uh, it's fresh bread, it's warm, throw some butter on it, and uh, have a good time. But the reality is, is that uh, it's going to even taste better, even better, in about 30 minutes. So, we'll see you tomorrow. We're going to be doing cheese bread tomorrow. And um, all I can say is just be ready. We're going to be addressing our sourdough starter and cheese bread tomorrow.